Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to do a fast track implementation for setting up financials. It's important to note that many companies such as yourself may have special business case use scenarios. And while Acumatica can be configured in many different ways to fit your company's needs, this is just one method and it's a fast track to getting it set up and running and being able to put transactions through the system. So we created a new tenant here and we're gonna set up the financials for a very basic company. So let's get started. I'm gonna change my company and sign in. So this is a very basic company, nothing's going on here. So the minute I try to go into any screen, other than enable and disable features, Acumatica will bring me into enable and disable features. The activation status is pending activation. So this is the first screen we start off with, enabling the features that we want or that we absolutely need, I should say. So only the things that we want to set up are what we check off here. So for the purpose of the basic company, I don't really need much of this. Uh, I'll turn on 1099 and I'll click on enable. So now you see a few menu items have been enabled. So the first thing we want to do is to get started with our finance. So we want to get our chart of accounts populated. And you'll see Acumatica tells us if we miss a step. So the first thing we need to do is company branches. So we'll click on that. We'll give it a company name. A lot of this information will show up on the base reports. We'll put in our base currency, which will be USD. And you could see the fields that are required. We need our country. We could fill in all this stuff later. And we'll save it. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create a financial ledger. And if we click on create ledger here, this will be our actual ledger. So in Acumatica, our book of transactions, all of the transactions get posted to a ledger. Additionally, you can create other ledgers. So for example, for budgets, or you can create ledgers for forecasting, or even for bringing in, importing additional transactions or using allocations to do advanced reporting on. So you have your actual ledger and then you can have these additional ledgers for comparisons on financial reports. So this will be our ACME actual ledger. And we'll click create. And now we have our first ledger. And again, you can create additional ledgers through the ledgers screen. So now we have our company information set up. Again, you'll come back and you'll put all your address information in. And we'll go over to our chart of accounts. But prior to that, Acumatica, the way the chart of accounts work, the way the financials work, is Acumatica leverages the chart of account with something called an account class. So class is considered a category in the Acumatica world. And what that allows you to do is define which account belongs to which category. So some of the examples, and I'm going to import in a moment, but some of the examples would be your long-term debt or your short-term debt or your current assets like bank accounts. Um, you might have one specifically for bank accounts. You might have one for advertising expenses. So this allows us to organize our financials easily because at the top when we're building, for example, a P&L, we can put revenue as a line and we could either break it down easily or we can roll it up. And it gives us the ability to place our financials in very easy areas. So if we click on account classes, you could see that there's some default account classes in here. So these are the examples, insurance, interest, and notice that each of them have assigned to a type. So in Acumatica, there's four different types, asset, liability, income, expense. For those of you who are expecting five, 
We don't need the fifth category. We don't need the fifth type because we can define our financial reports the way we want. So traditional systems need five. We don't need that capital type that most other software packages need. So now that we've taken a look at account classes, let's go over to our chart of accounts. And what we'll do here is we'll import. I have a chart of accounts and I'm gonna import it from a spreadsheet. So let's open up that spreadsheet and take a look at it so we get an idea of the structure. So if I move it over, what we're really looking for here, and you could see the different fields and which ones are required, but we're looking for the account number. We're looking for an account class of some sort, the asset and the fact that it's active it will automatically be active when we import it. Of course, we want the description. And additionally, we can bring in the currency. Now we don't have multi-currency set up, so I'm gonna remove those. And the rest of these should be fine. So we'll save it. We'll go back and we'll hit the import button. We'll click browse. And we'll select our chart of accounts, hit upload. Over here, we have the ability to, if we already had some records in here, we can choose whether we want to update existing or insert only records, but we'll click OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this and remove some of the things that we're not concerned about. So I don't really care about the control account module. These are things we're not going to really talk about. And I don't want to populate the account group that's for project accounting. Just so happens to be in my file and I'm going to click OK. Now we picked up a couple of error messages and those error messages relate to the account class cannot be found in the system. So you have a choice. You can go into these accounts and you can add an account class for them to match it. You can double click here and choose a different account class if you want to. Or what I can do is I can highlight a couple of records and just say, well, you know what? I don't want to import those chart of accounts right now. And we can save it. And now we have those chart of accounts in our system. Pretty quick and easy. The next thing we want to do is go to finance and go to our general ledger preferences. So we want to go in here and do a few things that are required. Now there's a bunch of settings in here. We won't go through all of them, but the year to date net income. So Acumatica has a placeholder for where it stores the, so Acumatica has a placeholder for where it stores the net income so that you have that running net income throughout your fiscal year. Additionally, the retained earnings, we set that up and pick that account as we cross over to the next fiscal year that's the retained earnings account we will use. So I'm gonna save that, and get our preferences out of the way. And then the last thing I'm gonna do in the GL is I'm gonna go and set up my financial year. So this is the structure of how our periods are gonna be created. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, we wanna start this January 1, that's my preference. We're going to, and we're going to start it this year, we're going to have the period type, and here's all your different period types. I'm going to make it monthly, and I'm going to create my periods. So that's what Acumatica did. It's 12 periods. It's pretty easy, and it's picking you know, January to January 31st for the first period and so on and so forth. Had you started the periods in February or some other month, then period one would be that some other month, and so on and so forth. And had you picked something else, such as 13 periods, you'd see that accordingly also. So let's save that. And then if we go to finance, and now we go to our master financial calendar, you can see those periods, but there's no calendar yet. We'll hit the generate calendar button just for 2022. And you see all these periods, but also you see the status. Status is set to inactive. So if we click on our ellipse here and we open those periods up, 
We could select all of them. This is your choice. You could select just the periods that are close to the current month, or you can open up all the periods. We'll hit process here. And now our financial periods are open. So now that we've done this, if we go to financials and we take a look at, for example, a journal transaction, there's not gonna be any in here. We can now do a couple of things. We can create a journal entry for the period. And typically we wanna start off with Jan 1, but we can create our journal entries and put in our initial balances so that we can do. The other thing we can do is we can use a screen called trial balance. And what trial balance allows you to do is it gives you a sheet that you can enter in the initial balances. So this is our trial balance screen. And what we can do is import all of our balances here and then validate that they're mapped to the correct accounts and create our initial balances. We'll click plus here. And what this screen allows you to do is import the accounts and their balances. No need to do debits and credits. You just need positive and negative numbers to initiate your balances. Acumatic behind the scenes will create the journal transactions and the debits and credits. So what we would normally do here is we would go back to January 1 or typically December 31st of the previous year. Now we didn't go back that far. But you might, you might go and start with December 2021 in this example. But what you can do here is we can import a file. So let's take a look at a file I took out of Acumatica Demo Company. And if we take a look at it, this is our account summary. It's an account summary inquiry screen in Acumatica. Essentially, it shows the ending balances. That's what we're interested in. Ending balances for each GL account. So what we could do is take that file, we'll hit the import button on it, and we can hit upload. And on the left-hand side, we're looking at the spreadsheet columns. On the right-hand side, we're looking at the properties of the screen. So we want the account to be mapped, and we want the ending balance to be mapped to the year-to-date balance. And if we click OK here, what you see here is all your accounts and their balances. So we keep going through the pages. Everything looks OK. But we have a validate option or merge duplicates. But we're going to validate this, process all. And this particular error, for example, the account can't be mapped. <clears throat> and if we look at it, it's because this account is not active. So I'm going to remove this. And also these accounts don't exist. So you could come over here and change to a different account if you wanted to. Or you could fix your spreadsheet and move on. I'm going to delete these. And save. And now we have all of these balances validated. So what we'll do now is we'll take this off hold. And what we see is the fact that we have a mismatch of our credits and debits. So we're going to need to fix this before we can move ahead. And now with a little tweaking, I have everything matched. Now it's important to note that when you bring in these transactions, some of mine had negatives. You don't need negative balances here. The sign is automatically determined by the type. So once we take this off hold and we release it, what Acumatica does is it brings you over to a journal transaction. That journal transaction is connected to the trial balance document that we just created. So you'll get a link there, but you can see all the entries and it's done all the work. Now, the other benefit of the trial balance document is whatever your current values are, Acumatica will create the net entries. So if you had $100 in petty cash, it would deduct that and make only the debit that it needed to get to the new total. So we can release this. And now we have entries. Now in the finance section, 
there are some out of the box reports. Now these reports depend on the account classes we talked about earlier. As I mentioned, the report builds off the account classes and your rows and columns are configured based on it. So when we run this, we'll select our actual ledger. You can default that if you want to. We'll go back to January, we'll run it. Now we have our balance sheet and it's working and the current assets show up here because they're part of those account classes and so on and so forth. Same thing holds true with the P&L. So if we pick our ledger and run this, you can now see there's not a whole heck of a lot going on in this period. We basically brought in trial balance information, but you can see everything is starting to populate. Again, Acumatica's report designer will allow you to configure your rows and your columns. In this case, the year to date and period to date is part of the P&L and it's configured out of the box. So that's the financial section of Acumatica. That's a fast track to getting the GL up and running. We will add additional videos for banking and payables and receivables and taxes. So thanks so much for watching this video on setting up your Acumatica fast tracking through the financials. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and for subscribing and have a great day.